quick introduction to Asana. In order to show you this, I have copied a number of tasks that I don't consider to be private into this project, a sample project. So here's uh, across the top, sample project in Asana. Uh, it's me, I own everything. And I think, I think everyone is familiar with the concept of to-do lists. We grew up with them, we use pencil and paper maybe, or we have them on notes programs on our phones. And what I've done is here are 30 odd tasks. Now, if I just had an unstructured to-do list like this, I would find it really difficult to get ahead on any project. Also, I'm not a person who really enjoys the list view, but I'll come back to this to show you how I organize and put it together. I am a visual person. I really like the board view, and it's kind of like playing with index cards where you can move them around. Um, let's just say, for example, let's find a couple. Okay, it's Caitlin. Uh, Caitlin is complete. Uh, we know this because it's got the little green check mark. Violet's project is complete. And uh, let me just delete that. This is actually how it um, normally looks, just in progress and complete. Now, in progress and complete is, is a pretty good way to categorize things, but uh, the joy of Asana is that you can add any kind of categories you want. And so, for example, you know, the coronavirus has kept us all out of archives for quite a long time. And if you're like me, then you have uh, a big, long laundry list of things that you'd like to get done on trips. And for me, I've got at least three. So there's three different uh, trips that I would like to do when I get time. All archive uh, trips. And I'm just, to delete a category, you just you click on these three little dots and rename or delete section. Yeah, easy. Maybe we could start at the end first. I worked with Violet on her fashion project where we discussed the identification of Chinese Canadian women through fashion choices. And Violet sent me some information on the project, which I uploaded to uh, Asana. And then I kept a little bit of information here on the debrief letter. And the one we met, and when we were finished, I checked off the completed. Similarly, I was talking to uh, Caitlin Webster. She's a Library and Archives Canada uh, archivist at, in BC. And we were talking about a particular issue with Chinese Canadian records. And so I find Asana just a, a much better way of keeping track of things like conversations with archivists and really anybody. So what I did is I forwarded that email into Asana just to keep track of it. And when it was finished, I hit the completed. Now the great thing about completed is that even though it's done, you can still search for it and find it. So if, you know, later on I needed to find Caitlin, I could type into the search fun function and it would give me the result and it would actually take me to the task. So in that way I find Asana superior already to tracking by email and uh, even spreadsheets, you know, don't uh, do as good a job. Now let's just see here, what else do we have? Uh, have? I am looking for a court case and uh, this gentleman had a criminal court case in about the 1890s. I need to find this in BC, and 
this is a really good example because here's a description of where I first found the research. And then over time, I looked everywhere I could online and asked people and contacted the archives and asked more people and I'm kind of stuck in finding his court case. But in this one task, you can see the description, the dates, what I've done, and what I need to do next. Now it says here, the case occurred in Victoria. Are there records there? And honestly, I have to tell you, my memory's not that good. If I had an opportunity to visit the archives tomorrow, it wouldn't occur to me that all of this has already been done. But now I have a quick snapshot of all the work that I've done to find this case and where to go next so I don't repeat myself. And this is another reason that differentiates a project from a task. A task is just one of these things, whereas a project and project management software is, you know, like a jigsaw puzzle. So there's the BC archives. Where else? I'm also thinking about uh, hiring a researcher at the BC Archives. I'm. This is Seattle, Washington. And I'm also. John is in BC. These are in BC. Hmm, there's LAC. Oh, uh, let me show you this one. So, I was chatting with my friend Brenda Smith, Brenda is a genealogist in BC, and she had this fantastic suggestion about looking for Chinese in this 1897-1898 delayed registrations of birth. Now notice it says Family Search FHC. An FHC is a Family History Center, and as we know, archives and family history centers have been closed due to uh, the coronavirus. But right after I got off that call and Brenda and I talked, oh, it must have been May, June sometime, I wrote down her pointers in this task and did a little bit of uh, work on uh, background information. And so you see, I'm going to want to know this the next time I have an opportunity to visit an FHC. So let's type up FHC uh, visit. And now I can move this over to an FHC visit. And again, if this isn't your cup of tea, if you don't like the board view, you can switch back to the list view and the list view will mirror the boards. So as you can see, here's what I need to do at the archives. Here's um, at Library Archives Canada, and here's Seattle, and here's FHC. 